Hi and welcome to part three of my six part series of videos on preparing your InDesign files for press. In the first two videos we discussed checking your document size and ensuring your fonts are loaded. And in this video we're going to talk about ensuring that the colors in your document are prepared so that they'll print with the results that you intended. Of all the issues we discussed in this pre-press series, color is definitely the most complex and in fact probably requires a series of tutorials in and of itself. There are three color related issues I'll be focusing on. The first is ensuring that if you're printing in four color CMYK, that all of your spot colors are eliminated, or if you're printing using spot colors, that only your spot colors are in use and that you've eliminated all of your process colors. This is very important because if you have a mixture of both process and spot colors in your document, it can lead to problems on press. And actually about a year ago, I created a full video that specifically discusses how to deal with this issue and I encourage you to start there before watching the rest of this one. I reposted it in the August 7th, 2010 posting on my blog at indesignjunkie.com, along with some information explaining the difference between process and spot colors. Once you watch that video and read my blog post, come back here so that you can learn about the other two color issues I'll be discussing, which are converting your RGB colors to CMYK and simplifying your CMYK color mixes to prevent registration problems on press. Okay, so let's first discuss how to convert our RGB colors to CMYK. Why is this important? Because RGB is a color system to be viewed on screen, not for printing. So if you send a document with RGB colors to the printer, you may have some problems. So let's check our document for RGB colors. And if you've watched the video that I just mentioned earlier, you'll know by now that the symbols in your swatches panel are what alert you to the types of colors that are in use. So I have my, my swatches panel open here. And if I scan through, I can see my, co my color swatch is listed. And the little symbol, symbol I just mentioned is this one here on the right. And we can see these little triangles, the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black colors, indicating that's a CMYK color. And so my color swatch here is OK. The next one's OK as well. But I come here to this third one, and I see a different symbol, which are these vertical color bars made up of, incidentally, the colors red, green, and blue, or RGB. And I know now that I have an RGB color in my, in my document. And so I want to convert this to CMYK, and it's fairly simple. I just double click on the swatch, and I go here to color mode to my drop down menu, and I select CMYK. And now I see my CMYK color values, and they're in these uh, decimal point percentages. I don't really like that. I kind of like using just full numbers, so I'm going to just change this first one to 95, I'll change magenta to 60, I'll change my yellow to 16, and because my black value is so minimal, I'm just 1.5%, I'm just going to get rid of that entirely. Change that to zero, it doesn't really make any difference whatsoever, and I'm going to press OK. And now I look at all my symbols on my swatches panel, and I know that I have all CMYK colors. Now, if Again, if you had watched the video I mentioned earlier, we can double check this just to make sure that we have no other illicit colors in our document by going up to our separations preview. And to go there, I go to window and I go to output, separations preview. And I see my list of all the inks in use, which are cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. If I had an RGB color or a spot color in my document, it would be listed here as a additional plate. It, if I had not changed that uh, RGB color, it would be listed here as blue, or maybe there might be a spot color that's listed as, say, Pantone 171, and um, that would be listed here, but I see that we're okay. So I'm going to close out of that. One other thing I should mention, if you use the color panel, which I'm going to go to my color panel by going to Window and Color, if you use that to create your colors instead of your swatches panel, it can, it can make it more difficult for you to check to see if your colors are CMYK or not. So let's just pretend that I'm designing this document and I'm going to make a square and I'll create a color in my color panel. And let's just choose yellow here in our spectrum. And so now we have a color panel. Just close out of my, or we have a yellow color. I'll close out of my color panel and let's just put this yellow color up here in the corner. And let's just pretend that that's a design element in our document. 
And now I want to check to see if that color is CMYK or not. Well, there's no way for that for, for me to check that other than to just go back to my to actually manually click on the color and go back to my color color panel. So um, I would rather have all my colors listed in my swatches panel. So to do that, to get that color into my swatches panel, I can click on it and go to color and go to add to swatches. And now that color is listed here as 75% yellow. Okay, so um, in the future, if you've created all your colors through your colors panel, I would recommend that you do so in the swatches panel instead, because then you can just have a master list of all the colors that are in use in your document. The color panel does not offer that. Okay, one last thing regarding color, and that's avoiding registration problems. So what are registration problems? Well, when your CMYK document is zipping through the printing press at a gazillion miles an hour, the press is laying each of the CMYK colors, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, individually. So for example, your document might run through the press once, and the press will just lay down the cyan ink. Then, it, then the document might go through a second time, and then the press would lay down the magenta on top of that and so on and so forth. When it's all said and done, those four inks are supposed to combine together to give you the colors that you want. Now, I'm not a printer, so the printing process may not occur exactly like I just described, but the thing to remember is that each of your CMYK inks are applied individually as the paper is running through the press. And one challenge that printers have is getting each of those colors to line up precisely. If they're off just a hairline, you can get an unpleasant halo effect where you might see a sliver of, say, cyan outlining a printed object on your page. Just recently, I received a rather high-end magazine in the mail and noticed some really unsightly registration problems, where a large image of tomatoes had been turned into a rather ugly kaleidoscope of CMYK halos, and even the title of the magazine was outlined with misaligned color. And the best way to avoid this is to minimize the number of CMYK inks that you're using within a particular swatch. In other words, if you want to create a particular green color and it only takes using cyan and yellow to achieve that color, then go for it. It's much easier for the printer to align two inks on press than it is for them to align four. And this is particularly true for serif type and narrow lines. Looking at my document here, I'm going to delete my yellow box, and let's just take a look at these, these blue color boxes. I don't really have to worry about registration issues with these because they're large enough boxes or boxes of color so that when they're running through the press, the press will have no problem laying down three or four inks on such a large amount of space. But if I was to zoom in, say, on my number three here, and imagine that this color, this orange color, was made up of four different inks, the press would have to lay down four separate colors precisely on top of each other without any sort of, of halo or outline effect going on, that'd be very difficult. So in order to check for that, again, I'm just going to go to my swatches panel and I'm going to double click on the color. And sure enough, I have a four ink color here and that is not such a good thing. So what I'm going to do is I have a cyan value of five and a black value of five. That is you know, not, not really a big difference if I just get rid of those entirely. I don't see how those added colors really benefit the look of my piece very much. So I'm just going to convert both of those to zero. So now we just have a two hit color of just magenta and yellow. I'm going to click OK. And that should be, be safe. The printer should be able to handle a two hit color um, for that number. And what I encourage you to do is just go through each of your ink swatches and just make sure that any sort of uh, delicate lines or, or intricate lines or, or small type is made up of just one or two inks and not three or four. And that is it for color in your InDesign document. In the next video in my series, I'm going to discuss one last issue regarding color, and that's converting the color in your linked images to CMYK. Until then, feel free to email me with any questions at howie at fortuitouspub.com. It's howie at f-o-r-t-u-i-t-o-u-s-p-u-b.com. And check out my blog at, the Indes at indesignjunkie.com. Thanks for watching.